You know, people talking about this, so like, why is the car on fire? Because it's awesome. It is. Dangerous, awesome. Yep. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to PlayStation Underground. On today's show, a very special guest and game. We have Far Cry 5, and I'm joined by the game's creative director, Dan. Hello, sir, and welcome hey, back to the How program. Doing? Thank you very much for having me here. It's great. Uh, thank you so much for traveling all this way for, for little old us. Well, the weather's a little better here than it is in Montreal right now, so I'm <laughs> happy to be here. So I am already upset to see that these cows were the victims of an exchange that we're going to have between our hero and uh, some opponents, but... Tell me a little bit about where we are in the game right now. This is, uh, you know, you're showing a larger take on a on a whole region of Hope County, correct? Yeah, for sure. So, I think, mean, you know, people who are kind of looking at this again after seeing it at E3 or Gamescom, they're sort of wondering, you know, how big is the region? We, we really want to showcase just how lush it is. So you're just sort of outside the, uh, the area that's known as Falls End, this little town. And we've got you sort of being able to bomb around and do stuff. And obviously the cult is out there and you got to be careful but we wanted to be able to surround the world with tons of stuff that you'd normally see cars different vehicles you could pick up uh, if you want to get into a classic american muscle car you can but that the world's dangerous and that uh, you know you're going to have to look around for people that you can kind of bring into your group and your squad and kind of push back on the cult because we built this rich organic world that really does push back based off of what you do right there <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> it's an unfortunate. It's super good. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff as a dev, we're like, hey, look, we hope we have the collision of systems. And when stuff like that happens, it's just you can't help but just kind of laugh. It's fantastic. And I will uh, point out that it may be if this is a viewer's first time seeing Far Cry 5, which is coming to PS4 on March 27th, by the way. Correct. Uh, this is, you are essentially a, I, I kind of want to say resistance fighter. You're battling a cult that has yep. taken a grip on exactly. a yep. uh, small town. And you were described. Well, a big town, a, a big, big lush town. Yeah, a huge uh, space <laughs> in, in Montana. Uh, but anyway, yeah, can continue. So we're uh, are we going to see a little uh, another exchange coming up well, here? Well, this is the kind of thing that we want to do is that we know that the cult is out there. And we know that, you know, you're going to start building this resistance. And the way to do that is there's going to be hostages that you can liberate, take some of these civilians, bring them out, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the cult, you know. And then when you do, you're able to get intel from them because I think... You know, typically people who play Far Cry in the past have seen us sort of, you know, you climb towers and that's how you inform your play throughout the world. And this time we wanted it to feel like just regular people, right? You meet people, you see them, you see what's going on and you get an opportunity to, there's one right there, picking up a weapon. They, it's, you know, some people are going to help you, some people are going to be scared, but that there's a real interesting thing that happens then the social contract between people in the real world where you go up and you talk to somebody and then they give you information and they may not have all the information and if we build our world to feel like that it just feels real now i don't know if this is too under the hood but i just saw that uh, susie's name came up yep. as you as you spoke with yep. her now is she a set like a, a written npc is this just a random npc that could have happened to be there in that moment like yeah you, so we wanted to work? we wanted to blur the lines between the sort of the random and the set and so what we really said was is like everybody's got a purpose everybody's got a little bit of a history so even though Susie may not be somebody that is a, a large player in the story right she's still somebody with a personality she oh has geez. opinions yeah here we go like why oh why not? No, my goodness <laughs> oh just drive right by it though <laughs> hey you know there's gonna be times where I'm just gonna stop talking and let the game talk to itself absolutely but yeah it's it you know we wanted to make it so that there's variety there's an opportunity to have regular people people who maybe you know aren't gonna pick up a weapon and help you but then at that point you're able to turn to Susie and say hey listen you want to join you want to fight with me and you can she's in the car she's gonna come with you she's gonna have opinions about stuff and you're just gonna go out there and have a great time together I don't know if you're allowed to say but is Susie gonna then permanently join the roster or is, is she at the whims of fate and she could potentially be you know down in the combat. whims of fate i know I you like, like that. the way I, that sounds i want to do avoid something really dangerous no that's really good that. that might be my next band name or something the, the whims, whims of, of fate. fate do it i like it i'll but take yeah. you you are welcome to take it <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> i think yeah i think what we wanted to do is make it so that you know we had characters like that and if eventually they do you know die that they're gone but you do have the opportunity to bring them back right okay. you do have the opportunity to do that okay more okay, animals here. on the side More of the road. Animals. A lot of wildlife already we've seen. I've, we've seen like three sets of wildlife. Yeah, it's in lush, this. right? We want to make it so when we were in Montana, we actually saw all this stuff there. It was really cool for us to see how just alive the world is. So we wanted to have that experience for the player as well. Oh, my God. Oh, that was so a narrow miss. Also, you could have accidentally started hunting in that saying. moment because I, the deer just sprinted by. That was by. an awesome shot on that guy, but the deer was very, very, very close. Lucky or unlucky yeah. deer. I'm not sure where that deer falls. Yeah. Um, so we've, it seems like we've rescued another civilian. So, so far, we're just a good, good old-fashioned hero. Yeah. 
And so I think it's cool because, you know, you got the opportunity to go talk to somebody, and th I think she's got a side mission right now that you can go do. Or you can see off in the distance there's actually the symbol for an outpost, so you could go take the outpost. But there's just all these little moments in the world that are alive that are organic. And, and to be honest, you know, when we design it, it's kind of interesting for us because because they're organic, we don't know what's going to propagate. And so it's entirely up to the player how they want to play it. You may, maybe you've met Susie, maybe you haven't. Maybe you've got a different guns for hire. Maybe you've got a premier guns for hire. Maybe you've got a fangs for hire. You've got Boomer with you. So that's, that's, it's really interesting for us to, to kind of sit back and watch it live. Is it really called fangs for hire because yeah. of the dog? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Who came up with that one? We I gotta don't get remember. Some but oh. I don't remember, but I'm taking full credit. Take full credit for everything. You yeah. designed the game yourself. There you go. And, I, shoot, I was going to ask something about the wildlife again, but um, is there, yeah, does the wildlife and just in general some other, this uh, this other tapestry of Hope County, does that play into side activities? Sure. I, I mean, hunting and other, I don't know if there's fishing. There is. Usually games like this have fishing. Yes, there's a lot of don't fishing. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's the thing that we saw at E3 is like, you know, we built this really earnest game, this, this opportunity for you to go in there and be the hero and people just go fishing and decide they're going to do that for like two hours. And it's like, okay, you know what? Play the game the way you want to play <laughs> yeah. it. Sir, you need to get off the demo. Yeah. We, no, I haven't no got the one I want. Fishing. So yeah, so like this is a good example. Here's an outpost, and if if you played Far Cry 3 or Far Cry 4, you you know this, and in and Primal you know this very well, the sort of the situation that you're in. But we've kind of made it so it's very much alive. And then what's really nice about this is that you're going to be able to go in and have the play style you want. So there's opportunities. Whenever we build an outpost or we build elements of the game, we really think about freedom, opportunity, and surprise. Mm -hmm. Right, the freedom to be able to attack this outpost the way you want. All kinds of opportunities, different guns, you know, different weapons, different ways of, of aggressing the situation. Oh. And then the surprise oh. that it may not always go the way you think, and okay. we'll see as it happens. That is literally every time I try and play something stealthy or strategically, it always go, it goes to hell I immediately. Understand. Immediately. Yeah, but he's doing pretty well here so far. He's taking him out one nice shot. Oh, is this a silenced weapon? Yes, that, so oh, they okay. don't know. Yes. Little do they know that they are under attack. Correct. I, oh, you know what? I remember what I was going to ask you is, does our protagonist have, like, a name, identity? Is it a, a kind of a nameless protagonist? Well, How have you guys approached storytelling? What we've been trying to do is, is, is moving towards something that's really lean, right? Mm -hmm. What I don't like is when I'm playing a game and the game doesn't communicate what my emotions are or my feelings are. So, in this case, we've got... <laughs> I'm just watching it. Brutal. Brutal. Just watching it happen. What we've got is a, is, a, is a player character that's super lean. So, you have an occupation. But from the standpoint of who you are, it's who you pick. Right. Absolutely. All right, so, so now, now they now, know. Now things are escalating. Now it's on. Escalating quickly. Yep. Tension's rising. I don't know if in this uh, footage we're going to see our uh, protagonist <laughs> down at any point. You may. Point. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. You may. I love, see, this must be really fun for level designers, having these little pockets of indoor mm -hmm. space yep. uh, mixed in with the huge sprawling outdoors. Yep. Because that creates little, you know, interesting points of cover and wrinkles to that combat. Um, the thing that's interesting is that as you're building this stuff, you know, a lot of the designers, you're looking at the distance from the road. Everybody kind of, like, that's the, the challenge of building something that people feel like they know. Um, I think one of the challenges of coming to the States is that people just understand how long a driveway should be, what feels right, you know? Okay, true. Yeah. As opposed to other Far Cries, which featured more, let's say, exotic locations for a, for an American audience. Right. Uh, but here, it's like, <laughs> this is very familiar. Yeah, you people. know, yeah. you know, a door should be a certain size. Right. You know, the steps should be, there should be, even branding. Like, the world is just filled with branding. I think, did, I, I, like, looked away for a moment, and the and the outpost was liberated. Yeah, they, they liberated it. So In a blink of an eye. That's right. So, that basically, what you've got here is now, now the, your, the, your legend is starting to grow. And the people in the region are starting to understand that you are pushing back on the cult. They're going to start to join you. And this is where you really see the resistance meter and the resistance start. Where now this is no longer a cult outpost, this is yours. And you've got people there that can give you quests, you've got side missions, you've got main missions, you've got story opportunities. You actually see the, the resistance meter go up. And what's happening there, which is really interesting for us, is if we're going to build this live game, this feeling that it's alive, and the idea that these heralds and the cult have a mandate, and that what you're doing is you're the fly in the ointment, you're getting in the way of it. So you can actually see your progression through that in the world, but you can also get the sense like mm. they're going to push back. Mm. 
Are there any other gameplay wrinkles that come from building up that resistance meter? I mean, is that considered like your global experience or is that character based? How does that work? It's more just getting a sense of whether or not the people are going to join you. And so you're really getting an understanding of when John or Faith or Jacob or the father are going to push back on you. This is a guy named Merle. He's a pretty interesting character. I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I was uh, under attack. <laughs> so that's super interesting for us is that you're in the middle of a story moment. And then what happens is, is that the cult shows up, and the story moment will stop, and they'll act like regular people. You'll basically see people, so you'll, you'll see stuff going on where Merle's going to run, he's going to head for cover, he's going to take a minute, he's going to, you know, in this case, he's, he's going to protect himself. And then when he feels like everything's done and over, he'll continue the conversation. Nice. I'm thinking about all the programming nightmare that that re it entails. It's and, not, uh, it's not easy. No, it's definitely not. We got a lot of smart people back in Toronto and, and in Montreal and, and around the world who really worked incredibly hard to be able to do this and bring these characters to life. And it's the devil's in the details, right? If you walk up to somebody and you go, hey, listen, I want to have a conversation with you, and then you decide to walk away, they're going to get a little pissed off. They're going to get a little hurt. And when you come back, they may give you a little bit of grief about it. You can hurt feelings in this I, game. <laughs> you, you watch out. Because that's the truest weapon. It is, really is. Yes. The, is the that mind is and the heart. Words hurt. Yes, absolutely. So now we're, do you, I don't know if you know where we're driving Yeah. Next, so, so it looks like we have a waypoint so in the distance here. What's happening here is that you're, you're basically going to go, Merle's got this pretty cool car, and on the back of it is this 50 cal, and he's basically saying, you know, if we're going to do some damage against the cult, let's go get this thing. So it's called the Death Wish. So you're going to go back and basically try and find this thing. Okay, gotcha. It sounds, you know, a very peaceful vehicle, the Death Wish. The Death Wish. Yeah. Right. You really, they really named it. They nail on the head yeah. with that, with that Happy one. Happy birthday. It's the Death Wish. <laughs> okay, so. so here and, it is. And it's, is it under cult control right now? It is. And, okay. and it's interesting because Merle says the thing uh, guzzles gas like he drinks beer, and that's why it's actually at the gas station. So he <laughs> knew that they'd eventually have to go and, and uh, head to the gas station. Small micro story there telling you go. right there. Dan, you got it all figured out. So, so what, what, uh, what we're basically going to see here is the attack on this and attempt to get it back. But what's really tricky about this is, you know, in, in maybe previous versions, you'd go in and try and basically blow this thing up. But now you got to take it back to them, and you got to be able to use it as a weapon. So it's the kind of thing where we really wanted to make rough tools and put you in, in situations where you could use the weapons that are around and kind of harvest it if you can. Oh, goodness. All right, so now the chase begins. I love how about to go in the truck and then <laughs> and wait, then it's like wait a wait minute a that is a badass car <laughs> I'm taking that this is one of the things that we really wanted for the game uh, was just being able to get into those classic cars yeah absolutely and then just go in the, you know great great movies of old fantastic car chases and, and get the spirit of that and you got the radio going yeah <laughs> yeah but you're being chased so you got to be careful. And I will point out, I think this footage is from single player, but the right. game does feature multiplayer Absolutely, as well. through the entirety of the game. Through the entire game? Yeah, what we wanted to do is just build this, this system of the for hire system so that it, it, it all felt like it was under one umbrella. So you have sure. guns for hire, fangs for hire, and then a friend for hire. Good old friend for hire. Yep. <laughs> just going completely off road bonkers. Oh gosh. Yeah, so they got backup, right? basically calling for help. Tell me, I don't know if, if you want to talk a little bit about the weapon system here, but I don't know how expansive customization is or if it's very straightforward, like you grab a weapon and you go. How did the, you guys the, approach design? I think, I think the way it starts is just being able to pick up weapons, you know, and being able to grab things that are around you and then start to, as you get an appreciation for what it is, that is your play style, to be able to go into shops and to be able to find weapons or buy weapons and then customize them the way you want and sort of get that classic feel to them. So definitely for sure, if you if you love doing that in previous Far Cry, you're going to love it in this one. I always spend an in inordinate amount of time customizing my arsenal. And then I and then I feel like and then I just end up switching to something else <laughs> uh, minutes later. And I, but it's, it's part of the fun. It's what, all part of the journey. Oh, goodness. Hello. What's, what's, well, that's just it, right? Traffic. There's going to be people on the road. you got to be careful. What's your favorite weapon that you usually play with? What's, this, what's the style that you play? I feel like revolvers okay. are usually okay. like something that, you know, in other in other shooters, I often lean towards that because they're good for a variety of situations. Sure. Yep. They feel cool. Yep. Sometimes you get those cool engravings on the side. See, for me, it's a flamethrower, but I don't <laughs> know that that would help here. I think that would only <laughs> probably, cause mayhem. Probably not. I think that really tells us about our personalities is that Indeed. you lean into the flamethrower. Yep. Mayhem. Yeah. 
What's, what's cool about this is that you're actually seeing like life on the side where the cult is going in, they're taking people. It's in the middle of a mission, but still the world is open. And so we really don't know what's going to happen. Oh, okay, so basically threw out smoke and now you're in a bit of trouble. But there's also a convoy coming by because they're actually doing stuff. Most flagrant use of dynamite I've ever yeah. seen. All right, so here's oh, the options. Trouble. Basically, you got to go get that truck. See if you can. Leave that muscle car. Oh, goodbye, sweet muscle car. Yep. We hardly knew ye. Oh, here you go. You get to turn it into a weapon. Uh, Up in the 50 cal. Oh, there he is. Now, I think, I think that that soldier probably should have turned tail at that point. Yeah, and you know what? strategy dictated. At, at that point, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe the courage maybe was cur too yeah, great is for, for him. So now you got to head back towards Merle. You've got the truck. And now uh, when you eventually get back there, Merle hops in the back. He hops on the 50 cal. And now what you're going to do is you're going to basically go around here to this place where they're stashing this thing called the Bliss. And that's one of the things that the that the cult uses to control people. So there's all these barrels of bliss, I see. and you basically destroy them, blow it up, and if you're successful, you get to keep the uh, the death wish. But only if you're successful. Only if you're successful. And you can hear it actually. You hear that <laughs> reverb? That's the actual drug taking its effect on the player as you play. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh no. Oh boy. Fire inside the vehicle. Yep. Never a good sign. Nope. Please exit. As soon as possible for your safety. All right, so now Merle's in the 50 cal, and he's actually unleashing on these guys at the same time as you. I like that you're still getting the stealth markers in a very yeah. unstealth. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, are you trying to? Yeah. No, you're no, no, okay. no, 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 I'm good. No, no stealth needed Not here, sir. What about, uh, how do you guys manage the day-night cycle in, in Far Cry 5? Uh, do you, is it dynamic? Is it something that's a set? Does it depend on story mission? There's definitely moments in the, in the game where we wanted you to be able to experience a certain time of day, but right. for, for the most part, it's pretty organic, right? It, sure. it manages it the way that you would expect it to. So you just completed the death wish, and now yeah, you can go and repair if you want, or you can go talk to Merle, or you can even go in and buy a new vehicle. Mm. Entirely up to you. You just drive that one straight off a cliff. Yeah, and then Who you needs go back. The death but wish. once you find it, it's yours because that's what you want, right? Now we're headed to something a little bit more interesting. This is a little. Uh, this wasn't interesting. Well, the already? last one was interesting, but this—I well, think you'll see what I mean. This is Clutch Nixon, the greatest stuntman ever to come out of Hope Valley. Oh my goodness! So it's. Yeah, I just want to this. So now, what we really wanted was, you know, whenever time you you know, go to a place and you sit in a bar and you hear about these 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 stories of the local legends, the local legends. Yeah. We really wanted one, so we built one, <laughs> and you get to play the memories of his greatest achievements as a stuntman. <laughs> and they're just awesome. <laughs> they're just out of control. They're just ridiculously amazing. The car so is on fire. You're you're actually kind of in the past Correct. right now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're you're living sort of the best of his his adventures and seeing if you can really beat his. And you can actually hear like the sportscaster talking about your feats and how you're doing. Dan, are you saying that I can change the past by <laughs> reliving the life of Clutch Nixon? I don't, don't know. Don't know if you do that. <laughs> Aren't we writing the past in this moment? You might be. Oh you goodness. Might be. But I remember, yeah, you know, recovery. people talking about this. Like, why is the car on fire? Because it's awesome. It is. Dangerous. Awesome. Yep. Uh, on fire still. Yep, correct. Love the music. <laughs> yeah, it's got, got to have a little bit of rock in there. Yeah. You guys always have fun with music in we these really games, do. don't yeah, you? We really do. It's I think we spoke about that before. Yep. Is that especially with this game, you're you're tapping into a, almost a completely different musical tapestry for sure compared to the other Far Cry games. And, and I think the thing too is that we really tried to make it so that each region is different. So as you traverse through the world, yeah, here you go. Big jump. Yeah. yeah. And there you go. The and big it's finish. Always to the water. <laughs> <laughs> He survives that, right? He survives that, everything. Okay. He's okay. Clutch Nixon. Okay. Well, showed me. Yep. So, so yeah, the, the music is just such a big part. I mean, it's part of what brings the charm. It's a, it's a huge component of emotion and whether or not you feel that in the game and how you... But, and we just put these sort of in, in the world so that you can experience it. And that's the thing about the game is that we built this game. We definitely have a story that has earnest moments in it. We definitely have moments of huge pushback on the cult. But we also recognize that just because we're thinking that the game is played a certain way is not the way that people will play it. Mm. And what we want to be able to do is build a world that's organic and allows the player to go in every direction 
you know, get any vehicle that they want, be able to basically play the game and author the experience the way they want, and then go off and, and basically, it's not predictive. We want them to just go and play. I think that's one of the most fascinating things about open world design to me as a someone from the outside. Okay, something so something is afoot. So yeah, so somebody they just basically if you go into the map and you're able to go over a couple of key locations, you can actually hear is people who are in trouble. And they're basically calling you over the radio. And so I think this heads towards Boomer. You think? We're not I sure. Think. Pretty sure to, this to is be to map. be confirmed shortly. Yes. That's super this cool. I wish you know I wish that uh, today's GPS could provide that <laughs> level of precision. Yeah, yeah you're, you're driving a car that's you know rear wheel drive, pretty slick, got racing slicks on it, but you got this amazing GPS. But it's you know it's important that if we build a world where if the player really wants to go and do something, we give them the opportunity oh, to, to know where to go and what yeah. to do. And to you could just play into the game. You could easily get lost in for in sure a, in a big open world for like sure. this. So. Oh goodness! Hello. Here they come. They're really not following the rules of the road, are they? No, they're not. Oh, just missed. Oh. oh, my God. Look at that swerve. Oh, and they just called for backup, so there's more of them coming. Oh, and the, oh, this is great. See, moments like this, which feel like an action movie, but they're actually being handled. They're just being it's created by the player totally in the moment. totally systemic, right? Unbelievable. Yeah. That really always blows my mind. I think, you know, we had a real moment on Far Cry 4 when we were working on one mission in particular with uh, Pagan Man, where Pagan started to do things kind of on his own, and we kind of made it uh, an opportunity for Pagan to make choices in the mission. And we were thinking to ourselves, why don't we just allow the game to do that across the entirety of the game? So right here, you know, the cult pushes back. Maybe an animal's going to show up, but you got a helicopter that's going to attack you. Meanwhile, you're headed towards a mission. You're, or you may even be mid-mission, but this kind of stuff happens, and we don't know that it's going to happen, and then we get to see it firsthand. Dan, I have a great subtitle for Far Cry 5 I'd like to pitch to you okay, now. I know the game it. title's already been decided. Let's hear it. Far Cry 5, colon, multitasking. <laughs> I got it. I think it'll. I think it's going to sell. Okay, copies. we'll get the dot .com address later. Yeah. I just work out the details with my lawyer. Cool. And I love, you can see in the distance, you got these amazing mountains. It's just, I love the diversity of the environment as well. Well, you asked the question about night and day, and, and, it, and honestly, it's like there were some really cool things about sort of being alone in the dark and feeling the sense of, you know, what's around the corner. And then there's just these beautiful moments of dawn or dusk. And the lighting in Montana was phenomenal when we were there. So we just wanted to be able to experience that. But then there's also terrible stuff Chilling, that's going on where yeah. the where the, the cult's done terrible stuff because they're bad people and basically come in and the and then you have an opportunity to push back on them. That thing off in the distance, that I believe that that's actually uh, a repurposed fertilizer um, container, and mm -hmm. inside it is bliss, and if you blow it up, you actually get resistance points. Okay. But we do have apple and pumpkin picking. Correct. Right there. And there's Boomer. Uh, I see the sign. Yep. So let's see what we do here. Do we go in quiet? And you can hear Boomer. Boomer! I'm coming. So what the cult is doing here is they're actually going in and they're taking animals. And they're taking animals and they're turning them into something that I'm not supposed to talk about, but I'm going to anyway. Uh oh. They're called judges, and they're pretty badass. So you're going to go save Boomer from that happening to him. Okay. And then be able to have your first thanks for hire. Ah, excellent. Also, that sounds very scary, yeah. and uh, I'm glad we're rescuing Boomer. Rescue all the animals and pumpkins. This would be so pleasant and peaceful if there wasn't uh, if you weren't embattled yes, in combat. Yes, not moment. for the cult. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing for us is that we wanted to, you know, when you're building a game that's this big and a world that's this rich, we want to be able to have a variety of stories and a variety of tones in it. Sure, you're going to have moments that are earnest like this where you're saving, you know, the dog and basically bringing this into your group. But then you're also going to have moments like with Clutch Nixon. And so we just want to be able to make it so that there's little action bubbles and stories that you can snack on. I love That's snackable good. stories. For sure. Low on calories, <laughs> high on flavor. That's pretty good stuff. Yeah, I came up with it just now. Nice. Okay, that helicopter is yeah, menacing. Just be careful. <laughs> here we go. I lo and I love the lighting that we're playing with here. We're, we're yeah, kind of going up on stealth. Yeah, the team has done a fantastic job. There's Boomer. Let's see if Leave him out. alone! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> uh, so here we go. It's on. Okay. Oh, jeez. Knife kill. Yep. Brutal. Now they call for backup. That's what they do. So basically, all right, so you've got him. And now Boomer's out, and he can hold his own. Go, Boomer! Um, 
Does Boomer come with like a jetpack or a rocket launcher? No, uh, Bo- Boomer's awesome, okay. just the way he is. Just the He's way. super good. <laughs> so they did call for backup. So Boomer's available now as a thanks for hire, but you got to go actually enlist them. Okay. But Boom, he's going to do some, doing, he's gonna doing do some damage. Work. He can do some damage. He can hold his own. Support your local power. <laughs> so now. Oh my gosh. Pat, uh, well, the most the important subcommand. Those are, those are uh, Boomer's former owners. So he's oh, pretty upset about no. it, right? So there's a story to be told here. We really just tried to put little stories in that you could just take a minute and drink that in. And now you can go up and basically pet him, and he's yours. Definitely a somber moment in a game that has a high emotional range. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Far Cry 5, which is coming to PS4 March 27th. Dan, such a pleasure to have you as always. Thank, Thank you, you for so your commentary. Thank you so much. It was great. Awesome. Uh, final thoughts for your uh, for the audience? I just hope they love it. We, we really are trying to build something that uh, and have built something where 